Today we're going to be looking at another requested video from the lockpicking lawyer. This one is a missile control key switch. Thank you very much for pointing out to me in the comments that any video over a minute is a pretty solid lock because lockpicking lawyer is such an expert of his craft that many locks don't last very long under his awesome lock picking skills. We use a lot of control keys and control interlocks at a nuclear plant, though none for missiles. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Cy Burgess brand key lock switch that was made in England probably in the 1980s. With 32 separate terminals, it's obviously <laughs> a very specialized part. I did some testing on it and found that in one key position, the eight oddly numbered circuits are on and the evenly numbered circuits are off. Okay. When I flip the switch, everything reverses with the odd circuits off and the even circuits on. Unfortunately, I have sure. no confirmed information on what this switch was used for, but I do have some educated speculation. This came to me from someone who purchased it from the U.S. Air Force in a lot of obsolete aircraft parts. I was told this was used to lock out aircraft weapon systems during training, but I've not been able to confirm what aircraft it was used on, so I take that with a grain of salt. I mean, I could understand it being like a safety switch, a uh, safety interlock to prevent something like this from working when it otherwise should have. Say, yeah, like a training exercise where you're just testing the flight or other operation of an aircraft without actually using its missiles. We do use somewhat similar devices for testing steam generator feed pumps during a refueling outage when the plant is shut down because we don't actually want the device to spin. Now, what is a steam generator feed pump? Well, let's back up a little bit. A nuclear power plant is just a fancy way to boil water. We're just using the heat from nuclear fission to make steam. And as you can see, the steam generator makes steam, turns the turbine, the turbine turns generator in order to make electricity that is condensed and cycled back through the steam generator through something called feed water. And feed water is pumped in order to give it the driving force it needs to make it back to the steam generator, which is under a lot of heat and pressure, boils the water, repeating the steam cycle. And that's where the steam generator feed pumps come to play. Don't worry, I won't go through this whole drawing. It is a more efficient process to take some steam from the main turbine and use it to provide that mode of force to our feed water pumps, essentially make them turbine-driven feed water pumps. We got a bunch of high-pressure steam anyway, we might as well use it. So you see that line coming from, the eight, from HP to feed water pumps? There you have it. Now one thing to keep in mind is operating anything with steam is going to affect reactor power. Because in a pressurized water reactor, reactor power follows steam demand, whether it's so increasing steam flow, whether it's to the main turbine or a steam generator feed pump turbine is going to affect reactor power by a proportional amount to how much steam. So steam goes up by a megawatt, reactor power goes up by a megawatt. So any manipulation of these systems at all are going to require a similar reactivity briefing and safety protocol that you would for moving control rods, for instance. So when the systems are shut down, it is important that interlocks are put in place to prevent these systems from operating. Now granted, typically the reactor is offline when the system is shut down, but you could take one feed pump out of service and still keep the reactor online. Depending on how the reactor is designed, you can have backup feed pumps put in place, or you could simply lower reactor power to a point where you're stable with reduced feed water flow. As far as keys are concerned, I've seen interlock keys look someone like this. I've also seen lock picking lawyer look at a key that looked kind of like this. I'll pin this one down in the comments if you haven't already seen it. I've also seen these sort of tongue gripping things. I think these are called safety keys, but it's basically the same sort of idea. 
as a physical interlock to prevent operation of the device. Now granted, these physical interlocks are really a backup because these are electronically interlocked when they're placed out of service. They'll usually have to sense water pressure, differential pressure, and steam pressure before they even let you spin up this um, feed pump turbine in question. So this is really kind of a backup for your backup since you have a couple of different electrical interlocks. But it's important to have that mechanical backup for something that you really, really don't want to work until you're ready. So totally understand the reason for locks and keys. But these are not, are not designed to be impossible to pick. So <laughs> let's see what lock picking lawyer does. When I first bought this a few years ago, though, I asked if anyone on Twitter could provide additional information. And a viewer from the UK told me this switch was used to control the arming mechanism for Sidewinder missiles fitted on the Jaguar strike aircraft. The Jaguar, of course, is not used in the US, but it does Jaguar. lend some support for the story regarding its use in the US Air Force. If anyone does have more information... So not a plane expert, but I believe that was a ground attacker that is no longer in use, um, at least within the UK. I think countries like India still use it. But certain types of ground attack aircraft can actually be outfitted with nuclear weapons. ...on this, I'd appreciate it if you would put it in the comments below. As for picking, it's a pretty simple wafer lock, but it's going to pose a bit of a challenge because of how hard it is to turn the mm. key. So, just let's give this a try. I'm going to use bottom it's of the so long. tension with this wiper insert. And because of how hard it is to turn that key, we're going to have to put quite a bit of torque on the core. And then a standard hook in 25 thousandths. Little click on one. 25 on thousandths. Two, three, four. Click out of five. Back to the beginning, nothing on one, two, click out of three, nothing on four, click out of five. I love how methodical he is in his approach. This is the right sort of tempo and mindset you need to have when manipulating something like a nuclear power plant. So granted, you're going to want to make it the only real difference would be you're going to make it loud enough so everyone in the control room knows what you're doing and you'd have a peer checker to um, help you out. But this demeanor, this calm and methodical approach clearly stems from many years of training and experience doing something like this. Not unlike people that would be on a bomb squad <laughs> either. It's... Uh, it's really cool to watch people that are masters at their craft like this. One, two, click out of three, nothing on four, little click on five, click out of one, nothing on two, three, four, click out of five, and we got this open. Just like that, he makes it look so easier. Um, though I'm sure if any amateur were to try to do this, they would be fiddling with this for a lot longer. I don't know anything personally about about lock picking, but there's I know it's, it it would involve a lot of subtle movements and a deep science of how the lock works and what what are the little uh, the little things you can do to manipulate it. It really is cool to watch something like this. <laughs> Hey folks, as you saw, it wasn't all that hard to pick, but even so, I think it's a really interesting old block. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments... That was so cool, and yeah, I, he wouldn't have any trouble picking any of the locks on a steam generator feed pump turbine control panel either, I'm sure, but again... One thing I will emphasize is a physical lock is just one aspect of a barrier to putting a piece of equipment into service that you shouldn't have. And even, even in this case, the, wor the worst case scenario would be you're just opening valves that don't have any pressure behind them. So it wouldn't even do much, but that's how seriously the uh the nuclear industry takes protection of their assets um and i'm just talking about 
these things I just talked about were just the operational safety in mind. So the electrical interlocks to prevent you from starting something without water or steam pressure or differential pressure. Then you have the physical locks. But then, of course, you have procedures, operator training. No, no operator, plant operator, reactor operator would even think of putting something like this in service. And as far as uh, people sneaking and going rogue, <laughs> nuclear facilities are some of the most secure facilities in the world. There are fences, armed security force, uh, detailed background checks, screening before you, they would even let you in to a facility like this, complete specialized training, um, also electronic uh, cybersecurity things, so that the digital aspect of a control system for something like this, the server password is only known to a handful of operators and instrumentation and control technicians to do maintenance on a system like this. So there's yet another barrier, but in place for a system like this. But yeah, control locks are fascinating. And seeing a device like this, uh, not exactly, I haven't seen this specific lock used at a nuclear power plant, but it's about that sort of vintage. Uh, the plant that I worked at was, first came online in the late 1980s and was designed back in the 1970s. So. This is about the level of vintage of some locks that you can see there. A lot of systems have since been upgraded, but seeing something like this isn't, isn't that far out of the ordinary. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.